Maybe it's time to let the old ways go. Maybe it's time to let the old ways go. And yeah, it's never time to let him know. Maybe it's time to let the old ways go. Maybe it's time. Trump, Barack Obama, everyone would lie. But maybe it's time to let the old ways die. Maybe it's time to let the old ways go. Maybe it's time to let the old ways go. Afghanistan, Iraq. And now the world is gonna know. Maybe it's time. To let it... Hello, is this thing on? Hello, 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 is this thing on? Hello, hello. My name is Shiz. I'm feeling good. Feeling good. In the neighborhood. Yeah, ten videos left. Ten videos left, and then I'm done. Ten videos left, and then I'm done. Started out a know-it-all, and now I'm getting sunned. Ten videos left, and, and then I'm done. The dancer, I'm talking to the dancer right now. She's like, um, she's telling me she's in love with this fucking girl. And I'm telling her, I'm saying. Volvió salvaje y busco mi princesa pirata. Juega con tus muñecas hasta que te envíe por ti. That's, I return savage, and I'm looking for my pirate princess. Play with your dolls until I send for you. <laughs> She's like, shut up. And I told her, um, tu corazón es mío, te lo juro. And I said, your heart is mine, I promise to you. <laughs> I'm fucking with her. She's like, oh my God, I'm so in love. I'm so in love with this girl. I'm dating a girl, and I'm so in love. Fuck it, she's just playing. She playing at the Y. She don't really eat there. She's just playing. That's what we would say when we were younger. We were like, oh, you eat at the Y. It's a very rude and cr not rude. It depends on who you're talking to. You could, I can juggle my friends however I want. I, I think that's hilarious. Society says, you should speak a certain way. You could fucking eat a dick. I could talk to my friends however I want. It's a fucking private conversation. But it's public, Shaz. You're recording it. Yeah, that's my journal. I'm trying to, this is my form of therapy. If you want to sit in on my therapy session, then you're fucking going to get therapy too, so. There we go. Anyways, maybe she really loves that girl. We'll see. I doubt it, though. Knowing her, I think this is just a distraction, but it's in less dangerous than a distraction than other ones she's been in, so. I don't know. I don't even know if we're, we're just friends. We're supposed to be friends. And also, I've learned to respect relationships. I joke around with her, but you fuck with your friends, and if, if they're happy, you're happy for them. It is what it is. And then Addie's in town. I get to hang out with Addie. I'm coming out of my shell. This year was like checking my head, see if I really want to run for president, do all this fucking crazy shit. I think I do, and I have a good support system. My circle is small, but it is tight. And, um, yeah. And then... um. I don't know. I fucking, yeah, the first girl I had sex with lost my virginity to became a lesbian, married a girl in Mexico. And, uh, yeah, now she's back on the other side. I mean, it's, sex is just weird. It's like that whole Kinsey scale. People are like, you're gay, you're born that way, this and that. You fucking try and put people in boxes so they can market shit to them. That's what it is. You divide people up into categories because marketers have no brains. They're like, we need to go after the, the Mexican demographic and then the fucking gay demographic and then the fucking the Obama supporter and the Trump. Those people are fucking fluid. Sexual identities are fluid. How do you know you don't like a finger in the butt? Have you ever tried? So, she is... She's trying that. Maybe she is. Maybe this opens up. It's, it's if you're happy. If you're happier with a woman than you are with a man, then fucking it is what it is. Can't. People are just trying to be happy.
I have an interesting story. Here we go. So I want to do this linearly. I'm fucking, I'm just, the last couple of videos, I'll catch up on all the docs. What docs are we officially supposed to be on here? I remember another one of these girls with five grams, eight joints. And people tell me a textbook tells them that fucking people are either gay or straight. Well, life tells me that I have sex with lesbians, so go figure. Fucking, I'm supposed to read a textbook and then ignore the fact that, I don't know. I don't hit, I don't hit on, I try not to hit on, I mean, because I've been hit on as a straight dude by gay dudes, but I understand it. It's like, the, it's as exciting for a gay dude, I think, to hit on a straight dude than it is, as it is for a straight guy to hit on a lesbian. There's like a, a thrill of the chase, like this is a hard one. So I've been in a gay bar with friends and there's some aggressive dudes, you just got to boundaries. And then you learn like the best advice to give women, my female friends, boundaries. And my friend told that fucking douche in Puerto Rico. She was like, yeah, you can sleep on my bed. You're my, you're my homie's friend, of course. Your, your back is hurt. But if this is a line to fucking try to get with me, these elbows break ribs. So fuck with me. Fuck with me. We're not, we're not going to go from like fucking, I don't know. He thought, she, he, thought he was in New York. It's like the people in wilder areas in the world have a lot shorter fuse because they have to. You have a shorter leash. They give you enough rope to hang yourself. That's what I always said. This island will give you enough rope to hang yourself. Manhattan, too. Walking around drunk and stumbling. Manhattan's not a good idea. Being, I don't know, humility. Humility is the key. Humility, self-awareness. What are we talking about? What are we even talking about, Shaz? What is my next assignment for today which i'm then going to ignore i did five grams eight joints and i'm going to contextualize all these i just i went off script this last one i'm just fucking i'm doing the linear i only have 10 more videos red face so i have to catch up to red face now red face is a good one so we'll pull that up the red face look at shaz the wild shaz in all his glory oh oh he's he's so nice see wild shaz i was so stoned no, I was tired. I look really stoned. I was just, it was late. And we, we, I met a guy. I'll tell that story and we'll catch up. That, that's one less thing I have to contextualize. I have King, of, I'm the King of Carmine, 13 Carmine, number 13, New York, New York, 10014, send him a postcard. And then fucking, uh, I'm, I'm lording over my domain. And um, UCB, the Upright Citizens Brigade, I bought their book. It's about like fucking stand up. No, no, it's about impromptu comedy, but it's life lessons. Thinking on your feet. I'm a salesperson. I'm like, ah, oh, this is good shit. I always wanted to do acting until that time in drama when I staged that fight to impress a girl and the fucking drama teacher flipped her shit. I was just too wild for her. We were, we were auditioning for Peter Pan, and I wanted to go for Peter Pan, and she got an excuse to kick me out. And so she cast my friend as, like, the main role. And then just stuff like that, like I was going to court, and then the judge bugs me. I'm like, I'm done with fucking these types of people. That teacher, I knew her all the way through high school, but just that little instance, I just didn't like her. I was like, I'm done with these types of people. I don't know, maybe she really thought we were fighting, but I, it was kind of silly for her to fucking kick me out of drama. Anyways, was, I'm going to say that's an open conversation. Open conversation, Martha Kennedy, wherever you are. She might not even be alive anymore. Martha, was that Martha Kennedy or someone? Martha Kennedy was a speech and debate coach. Martha Kennedy. These names, when you're young, they hold so much power. Like when I'm in the army. Your captain, Captain Margolese. Authority. And then Shaz always kind of bucked authority for nothing more than entertainment or to impress a girl. Broke my collarbone to impress a girl in third grade. Running through the playground. And the girl gave me the note. Do you like me? Check yes or no. And then me and my boys and then her and her girls and we're flirting and pretending like we're tumbling and then I tumble and crack my collarbone. There's a story. That crew of girls, one of them kicked the other girl so hard in the cooter, she started bleeding. It took me until like fucking high school to realize that she probably just got her period. But like there's this mythic story that like they were fighting, like just like us being stupid, and one of them kicked her so hard in the fucking, the vagina that she started her period. No, no, that our, our story, all the way through like that year and multiple years, I went to a different elementary school all the way until fifth grade, so like... I never kept up with these friends. But like third, fourth, I was in the same. And then we moved to a different fifth. We were like, yeah, that's where I don't know what it was. Or you remember all your little fucking elementary school crushes. I think kindergarten, not really. I was antisocial. They call it like Asperger's or some shit now. I just fucking was just trying to check the scene. Fucking try to put people in boxes so quickly. 
I felt I felt like I was always self aware. It doesn't mean I want to make friends with people. I fucking um I mean I made friends when I wanted to, but sometimes you just don't want to fucking interact with this think about it from a kid's perspective. Uh fucking the authoritarian nature of an elementary school, preschool, kindergarten if you believe in a natural expression of societies and human nature, and these aren't the most natural society, most natural um, forms, they're authoritarian structures with a bell system and all this shit. If you're independent-minded at all, you're you're questioning everything. You're like, this is all pretty fucking crazy. I have to do all this shit. I was always like, nah, this is fucking nuts. Y'all are fucking crazy. This guy in kindergarten, I remember, was asking me how many how many numbers I can count to. So I got up to like 110, and then I was like, does he just want to fucking, do want me to keep going? And then he just stopped me, I was like, fuck, he thinks I can only count to 110. It's like, it wasn't 100, it was 110. I was like, I know that I could just repeat this shit, I could go 111, 112, I just like kind of looked at him like, all right, and he was like, all right, that's enough. He, we were doing a, a class thing where everyone's supposed to watch the video or something, and he's taking out the kids one by one, asking them their ABCs and whether they can count shit like that. Like, kids know what's up. If the kid didn't have a discerning mind, the kittens and puppies have the sharpest teeth. The babies in the animal kingdom have ways to defend themselves. I had a fucking puppy in Vieques, or my friend did, and he could fucking kill chickens already. He'd, he'd cut you. He had fucking, like, he had a, it was, it was almost like a fucking needle, his fucking teeth. It was insane. Fucking, um, yeah, I was just reading about that big cats. If you get like a serval or a really big cat as a house pet, their teeth are big, but they're not as sharp as kittens. Kittens are fucking. So yeah, like human, we're wise, wise homo sapiens. Our weapon is our mind. Fucking child's mind is sharp. We don't know how to use it. That's why they could make fun of people and bully and this and that. I would tease kids too. I would probably bully people intellectually. Like I, that's how I survived. You, you got a mouth and. I'm 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 hairy, grown a, a fucking mustache since I'm in third grade. People are gonna fucking not this type of mustache, but it was there. People are gonna call it Michael Jackson knows what type of fucking name is that. But yeah, we're just. What about us independent-minded people who are just like you know this all kind of fucking stinks like shit. But then you look at your parents, you look at everything else. You're like, well, everyone's going along with it. I guess I should go along with it. My mom just told me staying here for two months with my parents. She told me about how there was a girl they grew up really fucking regimented um, because uh, her older brothers took them away from the father. They all became Christian and said the father's living a lecherous life. And the father kind of did, as soon as the, my mom's mom died, the father brought in a new fucking wife that was like 16 or some shit, fucking barely as old as the oldest daughter or some shit. So he disrespected the family and my mom had nine brothers and sisters, so they're like, Peace out, Pops. Fucking, you could do your shit. You could keep your money. We'll be poor on our own. So the Pops came in. My mom's dad came and lived with them for a little bit before he passed. My mom was like six, so she was orphaned when she was six. But she had this huge family. She's a little baby, the little youngest. So she remembers all this, like, but also the stories. But um, she says there is. So they're in the church and they're working. They're always working and but trying to get by because they won't accept the father's money. And then the um, she said there was this girl who would work in the church with them. And she pretended like she was a mute. I just got the story this way. You hang out with your parents. Fucking society divides us. They vote for Trump. Yeah, they're dumbasses. We'll try to educate them. We'll try to figure it out. They've been ingesting some viral propaganda. We're trying to find out the source. Who's dividing our families? Who's dividing our society against generational lines? That's another thing that's happening in society. But, um, but yeah, she tells me this story. Uh, it's human nature. These are all stories that are valuable. This girl would pretend like she was mute. Little black girl. And the fucking, they're racist as fuck down there in Mexico. Integrated culture before America. They freed the slaves and all that shit. But racist is a social construct. Usually for political purposes, I'm finding that most of these identities, the power brokers, it's easier for them to broker their power in politics if they get us in these boxes. These gay, straight, black, white. So for whatever reason. But of course, growing up, and my parents still have that fucking, I have it less. I have less homophobia, less racism. We improve society, but through measures, it's hard to get your blind spots out. It helped that my best friend growing up was black and the first girl I got with was black. Doesn't mean that I'm not influenced by a, a fucking society that keeps pushing us. 
goading us to that emotional lower level response judge people based off of superficial shit whether it's one way or another affirmative action is the same shit I think these are opinions we gotta work them out make sure that they're not blind spots Let's discuss with other people say alright how did you develop your opinion though this is how I developed mine are we being rational are we being emotionally reactive yeah this little fucking black girl is mute and everyone thinks she's mute my mom's like she wasn't I found it out. I told her once when we were alone. I was like, you could talk. And she's like, don't fucking blow my cover. I want to deal with everyone. And this girl's going through life pretending like she can't talk. She probably just... Uh, <laughs> and they would fucking... Uh, yeah, they would play their little ghetto games. And it's good talking to your parents about their childhood and then you recognize all these things. If, you talk, if I talked to them a lot when I was a kid, I don't know. Well, you don't have the attention span. And then... But now you got to recognize, oh shit, I did a lot of the stuff you did, but we had no idea. I had no idea who you were when you were a child. But we did a lot of similar stuff. My dad walking around barefoot. He's acting like a little barefoot Mexican, but he's just this white kid from Orange County. But he, he tans like a Mexican because we got some of that Arabic African something blood from his mom. North African, Sephardic Jew. But um, yeah, my dad's Jewish. His mom's Jewish. Okay. Apparently it only goes through the mother's side though. I don't know who makes these fucking rules. So culturally, I'm not Jewish, but genetically, I'm part. Go figure. Shit. I'm as much Jewish as I am fucking Irish, actually, probably. Yeah, that's crazy. I always, like, kind of thought, like, told people someone's left with the Jew. But no, there's, like, a quarter of that. Because grandma's, like, they're both straight out of there. And then, uh, yeah, my grandpa's fucking, um, they're Irish. My dad's half Irish, half... Well, I, I guess, but Judaism's so hard because it's a diaspora. You got white Jews, black Jews, dark Jews. I don't, do you have black Jews? Maybe. They're the North African traders on the Mediterranean, I think. We need, someone did the fucking family history on there. Neil Sadak is our cousin, I think. Someone said, and we got people in Israel. My dad's on some email chain. Then the McNarnies, McNarney in Ireland. They're the, my bro looked that up. They were the fucking church grounds keepers so spiritual people on both sides dealing with death mortuaries that that was his take on it we put bodies in the ground it's interesting probably have a castle out there the big families have castles McNerney is a pretty big family McNerney I think uh, the, the CEO of Boeing is a McNerney let me look at my cousin real quick the CEO of Boeing I should hit him up hey yo cuz CEO, Boeing, McNerney. And then I think uh, commander of DLI was a McNerney. Walter James Jim McNerney Jr. Look at this guy. Does he look like me? I don't know. Probably looks like my dad's side. That's a McNerney. It's fucking crazy. That's a race. What is race? I wish I share blood with this guy. It goes through the name. We're all a fucking part of the same clan in Ireland. Came over in the potato famine. That's when my grandpa came over. No, no, my grandpa, his parents came over then. And my grandpa grew up in Chicago. But that's what it is. Go west, young man. My grandfather's parents came through Ellis Island. And then they made it out to Chicago. They were smart enough to not stay in New York. No offense to the people who are in New York. But that's what me and my, my buddy in the army, we, um, he was from Santa Cruz. We had a theory that the best go west. We're like, yeah, everyone else stopped in the east. And then they fucking, and everyone who stopped along the way in fucking like Oklahoma. Some comedian talks about it too. If you made it out to California, you're wild. My fucking, my grandma too, the same way. Grandma's parents fucking uh, came through Ellis Island. But they made it out to L.A. Well, they have a little bit of money. Ended up in Orange County. So my grandpa did really good because immigrant, child of immigrants, Chicago, comes out to USC. So he studied really well, I guess. And he gather up these stories. And then fucking he got himself a rich little Orange County girl. Who's trying to be a little white girl. She never, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what her thoughts are. I never talked to Grandma about her Judaism. Didn't talk to Grandma much at all, except a handful of holidays. And now she is, um, the fruit fell off the tree. She was ripe. She was ripe and she dropped off the tree. Return back to the fabric of life. And her story will disappear unless I talk to other people. Get her story. Her sister's still alive. I should probably talk to her sister. There's some emotions I still need to get out about Grandma. Grandma Vicky, Victoria, 
Victoria Moryusev. What the fucking these fucking old names for some reason? Victoria, Bernice, Bernadette, anything with a burr, that's a female name. Haggis. No, that's that's an Irish dish. I don't know. What's what's a modern name? A modern name is like Connor or fucking uh, Blake or like fucking I don't know. Anyways. Let's do the shafts. All right, so we got this. I didn't even talk about this fucking, uh, this kid. I was lording over it. Look at that. That's good. I tried to, like, loosen up the mind a little bit of calisthenics. It's fucking free association. We'll get to that kid. We'll get to that fucking, I was lording over my king's quarters, whatever. It is what it is. Let's get back to the narrative. I was at 172 Thompson. 172 Thompson. And, um, I was thinking about this earlier today. All right, so what did I do? Because there's, there's the two step forwards, one step back. Because that's the thing, too. When I try to lay this out as, like, rags to riches story. You you don't, you want to do it the right way. You want to show people that, like, shit fucking takes a minute. And you have to be patient. And you're going to have your setbacks. And sometimes you'll be right back where you started. And you'll feel like you haven't accomplished anything. And you're like, oh, shit, I fucking... I am. So, I mean, definitely go into that model's fucking... Her doorman building. Uh, dorm, um, I, I want to talk about that a little bit. I had the Occupy Kid germ in that doorman building in the Lower East Side before I got to Thompson. I'm like a year into real estate. This is like 2014, so a year and a half maybe. And I spent the summer there. It's an awesome summer. I didn't take any girls back there. I didn't because I was working too hard. I was like, all right. And also, I was, that's what it is, is you build up your life, and then I wanted always to go back to the writing. So I was like, whenever I had free time, I, I would think about that. But then my business would suffer, so I'd go back to the business. And I also knew that was a temporary place three months, and I knew I had to get on a lease. I was like, all right. And then I had to tell myself, all right, the writing's going to have to wait until I actually like get stability and a lease. And eventually I told myself it'll just wait until I grow the business. I, I give up on it completely, pretty much. And that's what it is. I walked farther and farther away from my true nature. But I'm in that doorman building. What a doorman does for you is, um, like when I was in Tribeca and I ordered $2,000 worth of furniture off of Ikea, fucking 20 boxes came like from big beds to small boxes and the doorman like i came home from work i felt bad i was like oh shit i you guys have all my stuff yeah all lined up inside of the hall it's for me to take up they they're your assistant so like that's what learning like oh shit it's nice having money it's nice having and money things it's like that whole money teeth money hair is a real thing money health care so this is like a money assistance in new york i'm picking off the calluses from my hand I haven't worked out in a couple of days. My calluses are falling off that quickly. It's crazy. I'm going to give it like a week. I'll probably work out once. Probably, I want to fucking, uh, maybe, let me think. No, I'll give it a whole week. I won't work out until next week. When did I fuck up my back? Tuesday. And it's been Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Only third day. Third day and almost full mobility. I was stretching in the shower. Shower's a good place to stretch. And what else did I do? I, um, Woke up, I walked for two miles. So I walked for like 45 minutes this morning. I'm just tackling it hard. Probably do a workout within a week, and then two weeks I'll, I'm gonna try to deadlift again in two weeks. You just gotta jump right back on the horse. All right, and I'll start swimming. I don't think I'm gonna do, I was, I was gonna just start swimming all the time, but I'm giving it a whole break. I'm not doing anything athletic for a week, just heat. I did some ice today. I think I'm over the ice phase. I numbed it, it just got stiff. So I'm all about that heat pad. Thank you, neighbor lady. That fucking heat pad. I told my parents, I was like, we're going to have to buy this shit from her. My dad last night, I was like, try this out. He was like, oh, my neck hurts. He has the epilepsy. He doesn't get enough blood and shit. And sometimes he gets really, really stiff in his neck. He put that shit on. And instead of putting on the Fox News and shit, because we argue about that, I was like, just put on some music. He put on some jazz, some Louis Armstrong. Give me a kiss to build a dream on. In my imagination, let that... He passed the fuck out. In five minutes, you hear him snoring. That made me feel really good. I was like, we don't got to argue. We just got to take care of each other. I said, the, the love is there. You always return to the love. But it's easy to fucking give up on people, give up on family, relationships, because of emotional bullshit. That's a fucking politics that gets us all dialed up emotionally starts destroying the fabric of our society. And then the kids who are neglected and left without love go and fucking, they shoot up, what did, what did that girl say in fucking Occupy Wall Street? 
we hurt each other because that's all we can do. Uh, fucking the women, the most sensitive among us, recognize it. I think I'm sensitive. Maybe that's why I attract that female energy. Even if they're fucking lesbian, there's like, if you're very sensitive. But there is this different female and male energy. You know? Yeah, maybe that's it. Yeah, maybe these girls really are lesbian. And I'm just fucking a lesbian too or something. I'm like a, I fucking, I got with some girl. She was like, I was that girl that lost my virginity too. Shit, we have to fucking, we're going to walk all these stories back. We got this. Linear shaz. But that's a good memory. She was in New York. It's really cool to fucking, we had sex when I was 19. We were 19. And then again when I was 33. She was like, you're so, because that's what like, we recognize, remember. She was the first one. And now there's been a lot in between. She was like, you're so gentle. You're so, I just trying to fucking be nice to her. But, um. Yeah, there's different ways, different ways to get down. Sometimes it's time to be gentle, sometimes it's time to be rough. I remember one of my girlfriends, she was like, we should try like a little bit of like rough play. So we did that. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if she liked it. She never asked for it again, but I was like, I can slap your ass if you want me to slap your ass. I mean, like that's not just slapping the ass. It's like I've been with like different types of girls. I was like, you okay, you want to like open up the discussion to different types of fucking sexual communication so we had a little rough <laughs> and then after i think she liked it well we stopped dating shortly after that i don't know maybe she liked it that was fun that's good that that's why that's why that relationship sex is good is the best because you're able to explore shit you can be like okay let's try this let's try that how are you going to check your boundaries with a fucking stranger a stranger you're just fucking like everyone's like your guards up and you're vulnerable and like, oh fuck some of these strangers don't even want you to see their whole body trying to fuck you with a shirt on i've never done that shit i won't fuck someone who would keep their clothes on now there's standards you gotta fucking be okay with your body i'm not trying to fucking we could do some like counseling and shit like once we're in a relationship trying to help each other out but like if you need counseling just to have sex then we're already at different parts of the curve you need some other partner who's closer to your level I'm fucking just trying to get naked. <laughs> I'm just trying to scratch my itch. All right, Shaz, it's time to talk about what these videos are supposed to talk about. You've talked about sex. You've got some good memories from childhood, some good rants, self-righteous rants. 27, I got 10 more hours of talking about my life, and then I move on to my life's work. Five hours today. We're going to do uh, this until about seven. I mean, I'll, I'll throw some motherfucking heat on my back and watch the Laker game and see what type of team these guys are because they're losing a little bit. They're losing a little bit. What type of team are they? In sports character, life character. So I was, um, so the doorman, I want to explain the doorman because I'm, I want to get that essence of like when I was in the Lower East Side even I still didn't I didn't feel comfortable asking them to do things I felt like I had to put my friend's name on the on the list I wasn't it's when you're starting to get nice stuff you're still feeling like you're a burden to people you don't realize this is their job and and then also because you got to check them sometimes they're a little bit too after I was in New York five six years doing the business and everything I could like commiserate with clients when they're like they would tell me, yeah, the doorman get all up in my business. I'm like, yeah, you got to fucking, you got to let them know what type of relationship you want to have with them. Because they don't got, they got time on their hands. They're just sitting around. So the fucking, they can get up in your shit. You got to let them know, like, if you want to be here for their friend or like, without being rude, you're supposed to tip them, tip them too. Tip your super too. These are all people who are their relationships. And it's, it's a good union and a good job, but still it's kind of a tough job in a way. And they do a lot for you. Yeah, so I felt uncomfortable with the doorman over there, and I was causing a little bit of problems. I usually do with authority. I went and tried to buy a huge mirror and put it in the apartment, but it went fit in the elevator, and the fucking dude had said I had to take it out, and I was trying to convince him that we could take it up. And if that mirror shattered in, in that elevator, it was huge. It was like eight foot foot by five feet. It, would, it just wouldn't fit in the, or even bigger. It was going to cover the whole wall. I rented shit you do with money. I was like, I don't want to fucking get a big mirror and put it on this wall. Found it on Craigslist, rented a van, got a friend, drove out there. It was a waste of a day. Came back, wouldn't fit in the elevator. I had to fucking leave it on the curb. I just left on the curb in fucking Tribeca. No, no, it was in, uh, in uh, off of Broadway, off of Astor Place. 
someone came up on a really nice fucking two hundred dollar mirror. I just had to leave it on the curb. I was like, fuck it. If they could get it out of there, it took me a, a big fucking cargo van to even take it around the city. I was like, what do I do with it? And I thought, it's New York. Someone will grab it. I'm not going to fucking pay to dump this. And then I was like, by the end of the day, I was just looking at my friend. And they're like, yeah, it's a fucking waste. And Germ helped us. Yeah, Germ won't remember that. <laughs> he was like, I don't know what he was thinking to. Uh, Germ, I just thought that was hilarious. Germ coming into that fancy doorman building. There's this real estate kid who's on that fucking porch with me. We were having our 10 a.m. meetings. Meet up 10 a.m., talk about our business. I was trying to do the things you're supposed to do to get better at business. Talk about it, iterate, start, like, having my, like, networking. But, like, not so much networking, just, like, find some other hungry kid. And I find out that most people are bullshit. But he said he wanted his character. He said he wanted to make money. I was like, all right, let's do it. I'm making money. It seemed like he had what it takes. But he's living with his girl. Or he's living at, he's living at his mom's house still. It's just like this kid's, like... He's not doing what I'm doing. He's not going from the bottom to the top. He's still baby-stepping it, not really committed, this and that. i kick him down some leads. He'd make some deals, but he wasn't given the commitment. That's what it was. I was, like, back against the wall. I, I, I looked up a story this morning about this guy in Greece. I read this in 33 Laws of War. I love surveys of history. That fucking Robert Greene or whatever, that guy's a douche. But, like, I think everyone is, I guess. But, um... But yeah, the, the Greeks were hired, 10,000 soldiers, as uh, mercenaries to complement a, um, a, uh, a battle, or it was a campaign in Persia. But the Persian king or whatever told them to come in uh, to do one thing, but then he switched it on them once they're in there, deep into Persia, which is like Greece's sworn enemy. They're like, actually, we're starting a civil war and trying to kill my brother. So the Greeks wanted a mutiny, but then... Or they wanted to fucking say, fuck you, that's not what we ha we're hired for. But then they're convinced to stay, they fight, the fucking dude loses. So now they're on the wrong side of a civil war <laughs> that they just lost. Although the Greeks did really well for themselves. Supposedly the Greeks, uh, other force, um, fucking uh, routed the Greeks' camp when they weren't there. But then the Greeks came back and fucking uh, routed them or whatever and fucking established the camp. And then the, the people who won the civil war were like, you have to throw down your arms. And the Greeks were like, uh, usually it's well established that um, the victor does not disarm. I'm sorry. They considered themselves victors. Yeah. They were fighting on the wrong side, but they themselves still had their 10,000 strong men or whatever. And so they made peace with the dude, and the dude was like, all right, you guys can leave Persia. Just get the fuck out. And I guess it's like thousands of miles. He's just like, just get the fuck out. We'll send you an escort. So um, they're escorting them out of Persia, but along the way, they do some treachery, backstab them. They have like a war council or they have a council or some shit and they kill their leaders. Now the Greeks are like, fuck, or they're all despondent. Like, what do we do? We're stuck deep in the heart of our cult culturally sworn enemy and we have to make our way out and we don't know fucking, we can't trust these guys. And, and then the philosopher who had gone along with him, who was a friend of Socrates, forgot his name, Anaraxis, NXX6, there's just too many X's. He was like, um, he was like, yo, we just need a fucking, like, we just need to do it. <laughs> we just need to fucking stop fucking around and doing it. Stop talking to these Persian dudes. They're obviously trying to fuck us. Stop fucking, just, we have a goal. Like, like we got our backs up against the wall. And, and I, I, when did I read that book? Maybe I read that book during real estate. You just feel like that every single month, my back's up to the wall. I don't have any safety net. My folks just got evicted in Occupy Wall Street. During this time, my parents are renting a room off of Craigslist. So like in my mind, it's like I'm talking to my folks. When they were getting evicted, they were evicted and then they were allowed in two weeks to come back and get some other things. During that time, someone broke in, stole whatever. My parents aren't rich, but my mom had thousands of dollars in jewelry, maybe like 10,000 or more from just growing up. Her dad was wealthy and then they were disinherited or whatever, but my mom had family shit. Um, all of that was gone, all of like so. My family, I went to Occupy Wall Street to protest the recession and what was going on, thinking that I'm going to, I don't know. I told my parents when they were getting evicted, I was like, no, no, we're in the protest. We're going to stop all the evictions. We were just all young, naive idealists. We're going to fucking save the world. And then get your ass beat by the NYPD, find all that bullshit that I talked about in Occupy Wall Street crisis of what do I do so I was like let's just make some fucking money my family is fucking hard up so every month that's what's on my mind 
like those Greeks trying to get out of. That's why I read a, that story this morning. That's where, that's how my mind was. I was like, I don't know what way is up or down. I tried the protest. I tried this and that. I've been riding all my life. But I just need to get the fuck out of Persia. I need a fucking, it's like when you're playing chess. I need a castle. I'm trying to fucking attack and my king's just stranded. My parents are fucking, his family's everything for me. Relationships. Oh, fucking. That's why I came back to my folks house. The money comes and goes. Even the health. I'll be fucking crippled. I'll still have my mind. But like, yeah, fuck it. I take enough risk that like, mine might not be a gentle death. Mine might be a fucking one of the fucked up things that I do. But fucking, um, but fucking. Whenever I said that, my friends would laugh. I was like, but fucking. But yeah, we're fucking fighting our way out. That's how real estate felt every single month. Is another fucking. Let's see if I can fish, and I always got at least one or two to keep me alive. I never, one month I zeroed out. That's colors. I played a little bit too much. Otherwise, I turned it into a salary job. So I used that Lower East Side one to um, get the nut for the 172 Thompson. And then um, then at 172 Thompson, I should talk about that because we have like five more places before we get to 13 Carmine, number 13, New York, New York, 10014. I uh, went to, oh yeah. I was like, it's time to get my dick wet. I'm, I, I got an apartment. I got a year lease. And the Bitcoin kid, he's fucking, he's inspiring because he's killing it. He has a startup, a real, like, my roommate, well, we're not besties, but we watch movies and shit. But, um, and he got a girlfriend too. Like, we're just, we're both like capable dudes. That's what he went to, was it? He went to an Ivy League school. He has a master's degree. So, like, I didn't do the normal path, but, like, I had friends in high school who, like, have advanced degrees. I know I could have done it. It's easy to say when you didn't do it, but I tried to prove myself objectively. I went to school some, and I was just like, I'm not feeling it. But like the military, too, like I got good PT scores. If I had dedicated myself when I went before the commander, I was going to maybe push for being an army diver or something else. I, I try to research my options. I end up where I think I should end up. I don't need to fucking tell people why I ended up there. That was my original objective. You just... The fucking talkers talk and the doers do, and I try to stay one step ahead of whatever the fucking bullshit I feel is around me. So, but this kid, I recognize he's a very smart kid, so I like it. And we talk sometimes about business, pick his brain too. I remember fucking when, before the new year he was doing his taxes or some shit, or before the tax deadline, I guess. Fucking, he was holed away in his fucking room for like a whole day or two. He was like, he was fucking doing his taxes, calculating Bitcoin shit. We just got the new fucking, the word on how to calculate Bitcoin for your taxes or some shit. He's a, he's a big guy in that world. I should hit him up eventually. He has an understanding. When people, when people fucking, when I fall off on people or when I like act a certain way, like all these books and all this craziness. One day he comes home with his girlfriend and me and my girlfriend are just tripping out mushrooms on the couch. I just tell him, don't, don't mind us, we just took some mushrooms. <laughs> and then my girl was freaking out. I had to, We had to go to our bedroom. How did I get that girl? I want to talk about that. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, well, when people don't see, like, all the other stuff, like the military and the Occupy and my political stuff, I just look maybe unstable or crazy or this or that. And that's what I realized when I was reading. Well, I read those Reddit comments before, and that's why I stopped reddit um interacting and stuff i need to get more control of my emotions and my reactions and what we're doing here so i can get a better sense of who i am because otherwise when the projections come out it's like everyone's not on your shoulder or living your life with you so they don't understand where you're coming from you could approach that two ways you can be like all right i'm going to explain to everyone where i'm coming from which is what i'm doing here but not everyone can do that we don't all have the time to fucking walk through your life with you so you got to just take a pause and make sure you're not emotionally reacting because no one's going to be able to vibe with that. And those Reddit comments were starting to become emotionally reactive towards the end. I was just like, all right, I've done what I did. But that's what, so living with this fucking basic ass kid was, was that idea, like, I'm back in society. Just like when I hooked up with that girl down the hallway. Like, this is my, these are my peers. He's about my age, a little bit younger. So fucking, um, yeah, this is what I should have been doing, apparently. So I'm doing it. So I'm in that apartment, so I'm like, all right, time to get a girlfriend. I got a fucking, a year lease. All I got to do is, and I'm, I'm more comfortable in my systems where I'm making consistently three to 5000 now. When I was in Tribeca, 
I was a little bit like, can I? Because I'd never really, I got an apartment in my name once. And that was a fucking place in that bad part of town in Redlands where we had someone selling fucking meth out of the top apartment in the complex. And we were right below them and fucking their daughter was locked up and she'd call our phone and we'd run the phone up. We'd be like, inmates calling, run the phone up. It would come up on the caller ID, inmate. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> they were probably fucking doing shit, doing deals through our phone or some shit. But, um, yeah, we, uh, yeah, so, and that apartment went through, sh went to shit, so anyways, I, um, so New York, I was, and my credit was bad still, so, like, I, that was an apartment in my lease, but that was the first, well, oh, no, so I was gonna explain that it was a big deal to pay 1700 a month, because that 17 I was paying in Thompson was the same 17 I was paying in Independence Plaza in Tribeca, so it'd been, like, a year since then, yeah, because I got that right before the winter of, like, 2014, and, Tribeca Independence Plaza 2013. So when I did that Independence Plaza, I just started making money, and that seemed like a lot of money to fucking commit to every month. I was going from 750 hostel, which was 25 bucks a day. Like if I ever didn't have the money, I could street it. To um, fucking um, that's what it is. When you're taking two steps forward, one step back, so you always got kind of like an eye on your back. Like I could always go back into, fucking put my shit in the locker. And being completely homeless. I always got a couple hundred bucks and to last me till the next deal. But so when I got to Tribeca, it's like that kid acted like a little bit of a dick, gave me an excuse to get out of there. But um I felt a little uncomfortable with that type of commitment. But now a year later I'm doing it consistently. Every month that I succeed and survive is another month of confidence, like, alright, my system works. And I'm getting more metrics. I'm like, alright, if I advertise this much, I'll get this many opportunities. I know I'll get at least one easy one. And then it's just a matter of I could get some of the medium ones and then some of the hard ones. And then that's how I start making that ten to twenty thousand. I'm starting to get a lot more easy ones and I'm getting better judgment to get the other ones too, getting deals that I wouldn't have gotten before. That's what it is. When you close a client, we're like, I wouldn't be in a bowl like a girl. Like when I was talking about that model girl, if I could get her now. It's like, do I have the judgment and the experience to deal with situations? That's all it is. It's not about pursuit or predatoriness or ego is judgment and experience if you don't have the judgment and experience to deal with a strong willed woman then you're going to project your insecurities you're going to make bad judgment calls you're going to make her feel uncomfortable maybe and there'll be you know, just human interactions is about judgment and you need time in the saddle sometimes we're not we're not born with perfect judgment you have to develop it through situational um through experience, which gives you the situational awareness. So, but I had a fucking, I knew enough to get a girlfriend. I've had a girlfriend before. That's what Shaw was like, that fucking, and then uh, the Puerto Rico was like, I could fucking swing a chick. It's just what type of chick. So I, I got the apartment for a year and I was like, well, that's time to dig into my full service. I fucking built my bookshelves all around the fucking, my little tiny room, put my desk in the corner, these leaning desks that I get from Crate and Barrel. I bought like five of those in New York. Every time I got a new apartment, I would move, sell it, and then go find it again. I stopped buying them new, but I'd find it again on Craigslist. New York, everyone's selling the same shit, buying the same shit. Fucking, uh, not the same desk, but pretty much the same desk. Got a really nice chair. I've always been about the nice chairs. Fucking, I think I spent two, three hundred bucks, maybe even like five hundred bucks on my last office chair. Just some shit is like when you have the money, it's like when I, when I have the money, I got the computer monitor I wanted. Not the one that, like, there's, I mean, I'm sure there's, like, rich shit that I can't afford, but I could afford as nice as, it's like, once you have money, you do certain things for yourself. If you're into bird watching, you're going to get the high-end binoculars, or if you're an audiophile, I never really got the headphones I wanted, but I was eyeing them, like, a nice, like, uh, because there's a, that's, you learn how to shop. Like, if you're always poor, you never really shop, but once you have money, you're like, all right, what's the diminishing returns? Like, I've heard with a bottle of wine. Paying over a hundred bucks isn't really worth it, but there's these little, little like you can always get a cheap bottle of wine that's pretty decent under twenty bucks. But now if you want it medium or this and that, there's these price points where you get um, more return and then diminishing return. Same with headphones. I looked up some, so there's some like on my short list. But, like so, when you have money, so that's the thing with like office shit. Like I always like I'm a writer, I'm gonna have my desk. I'm a, so I'm gonna have a fucking chair that I like and not a fancy like ergonomic this and that. It was style. It was, I like hard chairs. I could sit on a rock. This is this thing feels like a rock. It's a piece of wood, but like it was style, metal, sleek, modern, and that's not even my style. But just for the chair, like leather and metal, 
just I like that for some reason. And the swivel, just it looks sharp. I have this aesthetic. All my places I would design a little bit. Just the same with my business. It's, this is another skill set. It's like when I would think like, what is it that I'm capable of doing? I'm capable of wearing the different hats needed in order to start a business. The marketer, the designer, the business, the metrics, the salesman. I can fucking pretty much, and that's how I was breaking down my business. I would, um, I first started breaking it down because when I would tell people the same way I'm doing this, I've never felt a lack of words. Coffee helps, of course, but just my mind quickly categorizes the world around me. And so when I would talk to people, I guess maybe it's a discomfort thing or something, but like I would talk to my boss over at Heck Group. I'd be like, yeah, the way I see you, they'd be like, oh, you're doing good. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm trying to. I'm trying to learn this business best I can. The way I figure it, if I can survive while I'm learning, then I'm winning. So I'm not trying to make the most money. I'm trying to make the most consistent money and survive while I get better at this. And then once I have a system, I can scale it up. And I would tell people, I was like, this is, if I could get the algorithm of this rental process, which I seem to be doing, I got the McDonald's recipe on how to scale up the McDonald's. That's what's, re that's what's profitable. And then when I read the, watched the Ray Kroc movie, fucking, that was exactly what I was saying, and that came out years later, is that the secret about McDonald's is in the system. It's not in the, I, I heard that quote before that movie came out. I heard the quote that, not a quote, an, an anecdote, just like I said, the Greek anecdote. I read a lot. If you read a lot, Warren Buffett the same way. I don't think the guy has the best character, but he has a lot of money because he is, he has parts of his character are well, are what you need to make money. Um, does he have what you need in order to be happy, develop good social networks, um, develop a good world to leave to his posterity, this and that? I don't, I don't think Warren Buffett is a fully actualized human being. But as far as accumulating wealth goes, he's done that really well. But he drinks sodas and eats burgers and shit. He's fucking, the guy has blind spots bigger than the fucking... I don't know. That's amazing that people can have that much money and have that big blind spots. He's uh, Well, that's what it is. The money starts becoming a blind spot. Because you get good at something and then it kind of, it has a funny way of blinding you to other aspects of human nature that you probably should be working on too. That's what like with me, like I was making money in this whole lifestyle I had in New York. But I was re noticing that I was atrophying a little bit. Just like my back. How am I going to deal with this back issue? I'm going to build up the muscles around it. I'm going to go right back out the back. I'm going to make it stronger. And then fucking, I will have a less likely chance of doing this in the future because I'm going to guard against the things that caused me to throw it out in the first place, like the distractions, concentrate on my form, don't put that heavy of an exercise at the end of my workout. I already knew I was fucking kind of dizzy. It was a good workout to leave you kind of wavering. I was already kind of in that mode where like I was sweating hard, breathing hard. I'd done legs. I'd done very large muscle groups. And I was going to hit this hard, and I was doing like three sets of like uh, 12, 8, 12, 10, 8 reps. It wasn't that bad of a weight. And then my form, that was really the form too. But on top of all that, I'm going to also start doing core exercises, which I've always, I've neglected. I started doing sit-ups finally, but I need to start doing the Superman fucking lay on your stomach, raise your hands and your legs up, all that bullshit, pussy-ass shit that makes you stronger in small ways that men think is silly, in my experience. Like my dad, I'm like, eat some fucking vegetables. He's like, I'm not a rabbit. I ain't going to eat vegetables. Red meat. So like some of us, I'm less of a fucking dumbass than he is, but I'm still a dumbass in certain ways. And we all get more civilized. But um, sometimes I rant and I'm like, what the fuck was I talking about? I was in the, um, because I'm trying to get back to the original thread. You fucking, um. Dumbass, vegetables, fucking core, hurt myself, fucking build up muscle, blind spots, Warren Buffett, make money, systems. Fucking, I was, uh, the, um, my boss is talking to me and I'm like, yeah, the way I see it is I got a Simba system. There's sales, there's inventory, marketing, branding, and analytics. And my, my, my writing brain is like, I should still work on that book. That's a good book. If I'm going to write a book about sales and business, I would use that metaphor, the Simba system. Simba means lion in some African fucking language. So you can't fucking copyright a native language, Disney, I'm sorry. And that's why they use the word Simba. But um, yeah, so and anagrams and ways just to remember stuff. So that's what I realized my skill set is. As a leader, as a CEO, as a writer, as a whatever the fuck I am, I seem good at breaking down complex systems to 
simple analogies, constituent parts. Um, I don't do that voluntarily. I do that as a way of processing the world around me. This seems to be a human behavior, and I'm just well adapted. Like, that's something that I have a good expression at. Some people are articulate. Or some people are, are kinesthetically. Some people are physically strong. Some people have good ears. I think I have a good nose. It's fucking the nose is this big. It better work. Yeah, I told my mom that this morning. She was like, shut up. She's like, I've always had a good nose, something, something. I was like, it knows that big, it better work. She was like, shut up. So again, we're good. We're on good terms now, my folks. We try to balance it out. Don't always argue, but we'll go through our trials. Very emotional people. I have to call them on their bullshit sometimes. Me and my mom have a standing bed. I was like, if Trump doesn't go to jail, I'll kiss your feet and fucking never speak of you to your politics again. I was like, the writing's on the wall. I said that like a month ago. I was like, dude, fucking committed felonies. He's going. He's going down. Anyways, we'll see. But, um, yeah, so Simba system. So that's something that when I'm speaking to people, they don't know what, what, how to deal with me. Like, my fucking... It's, basically, it's also pushing my energy up a little bit so my boss is off my back. Because he's a broker in the, in the real estate brokering business. I'm an independent contractor. You're getting $500. I'm getting 100% of my money now. But you're getting $500 each one of my deals, and I'm paying you a desk fee to fucking sit in this office. So it's like, basically, like, you shouldn't have any shit on me as long as i'm not bringing shit to your business i'm just making money we, we could be nice and they're old school they're nice guys these guys in real estate sometimes we fucking we have drinks we talk um poker games in the office but sometimes when they ask me about my business i run my mouth partly to push my energy out there they don't know what the fuck to talk to me about i'm just like look at this way but because i'm basically i feel like i'm being intelligent articulate it's just like yeah it makes sense right all right cool i'm fucking just that's the end of the conversation but I was like, yeah, so there's like sales, inventory, marketing, branding, analytics. So sales is my salesmanship, my sales philosophy, the win-win philosophy, consultatory sale. Get my agreements on the front end. You're going to work with me because I'm the best person for the job and you're going to pay me a fee. If you don't believe in that, then we don't have the right assumptions to begin with. Why waste each other's time? Inventory. I have to be good at my job, though. I have to know the inventory. I have to know all 13 to 16, 18 neighborhoods in Manhattan. Know uh, what the prices are, the historic prices. I could look that up, but I'm supposed to know the trends. So that way, if you tell me that you want to be in the um, Nolita and you will have a fucking 2500 for a one bedroom, I'm supposed to, yeah, that's what I'm going to show you, but I'm also supposed to advise you. Well, if you have 2500 for a one bedroom, you can get some good stuff in the East Village. You'll be about five, seven blocks out of where you want to be. Might be a little bit cheaper because Nolita is tiny, first of all. You're north of Little Italy. You only got a couple blocks sandwiched between Broadway and the Lower East Side proper, and you're above Delancey. Um, below that is going to be like Chinatown, and then fucking the Lower East Side is pretty big and pretty distinct. The reason why people like Nolita is that you have a lot of cafes outside. It feels European. I have European clients who love it. It has a certain energy to it, but it's only a couple blocks. So the inventory is a little tight, and the price is a little high because of it, because of the desirability, the cachet of the types of restaurants that are over there. But if we put you like four or five blocks outside, your money's going to go a little bit further. And this is New York anyways. We're all walking an average of five miles a day. Stuff like that. So to be able to have that type of conversation with every neighborhood. But that, I, I studied some, but it's just from doing. That was just coming from doing. So we have sales, inventory. That's time in the seat of being a broker. Marketing. I have to know how to market. I have to know that. What's my return on investment on in Street Easy? On Rent Hop? On Naked Apartments? On uh, fucking, uh, do I do anything on the side? I should have an X factor. I always try to do... Pro, like Google does, a Project X, 80% of your time on this, was it? No, they would say 70% of your time on your main job, 20% of your time on a tangential job, and then 10% of your time on your Project Xs, your, your moon shots. And um, when I read stuff about business, I'm like, that's how cocky I am. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty much what I would say. It's like, it's not that I'm taking their advice. I'm just thinking that's how I would solve the problem too. So now I'm running my own business. That's what I'm doing. My sharing apartments was my Project X. At first, it was going to supplement my income, but then I thought, all right, I ran it for a whole year. That was my main thing I did, and I made decent. That's probably the year I made 90000 but then when I started to realize how many headaches I was going getting and these things were exploding, after I wouldn't have gotten my apartment on 172 Thompson if I didn't do the shares because that was a share, and then it, but it fell out. They were starting to fall out every other one, and I was like, fucking, I can't deal with it. it was, I was going to have a heart attack every time I had one of these fucking... It's, it's, it, it breaks your heart to make the commission, especially the type way I'm trying to grow my business with like a brand and a reputation. I started to get like up to 50, 60. I think I had 55 positive reviews by the end of it. 
But like, so I was starting to get everyone loves me and shit, but that means that I can't, I can't afford to have a fuck up. So when it, bad stuff happens, I have to eat the loss or do something. Like when that kid comes after me from Spain and steals my thousand, I just got to eat it because my brand and my integrity, it's, it's who I am. I am not the average broker. I'm the dude who's fucking has a word and does a good job. And, um, so yeah, so anyways, so the marketing, that's Project X and then the, um, Simba sales inventory marketing brand. So that we just talked about brand. Brand is how I look, how I dress, how I present myself. Brand is the culture of the company, the outward facing culture. So um, like the, the four, I have the four logo. I came up with that, the share apartments, I came up with that thing. So it's somewhat of the, um, of the imaging, but brand isn't just like the, the yeah, the, so that's what it is. It's the look of the company and the logos. And then it's also the look of, of myself. Collared shirts and slacks is real basic shit. I'm not doing three-piece suit, not trying to be too fancy. But I'm not fucking um, being a slob either. I'm sharp. Sharp and simple would probably be the, the aesthetic taste. I like it. Sometimes I'd do the beard and stuff. But even then, I would cut it up. Always, like, clean cut on the sides. When I had a kid, he had a fucking... Had a kid. When I had a guy working for me, a young kid, uh, he had a fro. Um, black kid, tall guy. He had a lot of presence. And I liked him because his energy and his people skills. I was like, you don't got to cut your hair, dude. Just trim the sides. That's all. And it was already kind of short. I was just like... Just get it to like maybe skin on the sides and you're good. And fucking keep the fro, keep your style. I like your style. Just, I told him that when you take the hair off the ears, you just look a lot sharper. That's why all the fucking, everyone does it. That's why I'm going to, when I go to boring shit, I'm not going to fucking cut my hair because like I don't wear socks either. I'm wearing sandals. I've done that shit. Wearing shoes is, you're a slave. <laughs> like fucking, I see the guys and you can see the sock lines on their fucking ankles from wearing socks for 20 years in an office. I'm like, God damn, you fucking sold your soul. Like, my friend in Puerto Rico, she would tell me, when you don't have a tan line where your flip-flops are, when your feet are uniformly tan, she's like, that's when you're winning. You fucking, you have a tan line from flip-flops? Yeah, you, you just, you haven't been walking barefoot enough. I remember shit like that. It's like, when I could, when I have a fucking line from socks on my legs, it's like, I might as well have a shackle on my ankle. It's like, so, uh, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm proud of the hair. I'm proud. Of, that's what the guys in the military who get out and grow the fucking beard, the freedom beard. It's like, no, dude, once you have to do something so much, it's the freedom. So we have sales, inventory, branding, marketing, and then analytics. Analytics is my advantage. So I track all my data, and that's how we're going to get better. We have lagging indicators, lead indicators. The fucking, we're trying to make sure that we know what's going on in our business. So we have all the fucking data so we can get the outline of the business. But then we're also trying to make sure that we're trending towards our goals. How am I going to make $10,000 in the month if I don't know when to adjust? At the very beginning of the month, am I getting enough leads to run through my metrics to know that, like, so, like, I, I got to the point where fucking at the um, beginning of the month, based off of the first little fucking push of leads, the first day or two, I could tell what type of month it was going to be because I could just compare. I had, I, had a, I had a daily, I had it down for, like, four years of daily fucking leads into my business, and I'm only a one dude, so I, I ran a couple of accounts of the fucking other real estate agents just to multiply my marketing so i started advertising under other people's names too just as, as any company does you know like four agents now you can quadruple your your marketing footprint and quadruple the money though but if all my numbers hold it's like yeah even if i can't close the same metrics because i'm spread too thin fucking i'll spend fucking four times the marketing budget to close twice the business my marketing budget is a thousand and i'm closing ten thousand to twenty thousand so my marketing budget is five to ten percent of my business I'll fucking I'll spend twenty percent to get another hundred percent business. I'll spend my my rule of thumbs. I would spend up to half a deal to get the deal. That's you don't want to do that long term because if you fucked up, you can only do that twice and you're zero. But that's what real estate teaches you. It's a very aggressive spend mentality. We're all shoulder to shoulder, so you gotta. That's why it's the easiest fucking industry to f sell bullshit to, because if you come in with a good sales pitch about your new marketing method and your new website, I'll throw 100, 200 away just to fucking, just for a month, just to see if there's any dent. Cause you're always looking for a competitive advantage over your next, but I'm seeing that. And I'm seeing the brokers I work for get conned by these other guys too. Oh, we got 30 seconds. Fucking get conned to build websites. I see the meetings with the fucking main brokers in the back room. And I see the fucking, cause I know a little bit about websites. I see the snow job going on and I'm like, they're getting conned for like fifty, hundred thousand dollars for something they could have done for 10 and an independent contractor, but that's life. You start to realize that people with money, people with power, aren't necessarily, it doesn't mean that they're smart. It doesn't mean that they're the best decision makers. 
And that's motivating me to start my own shit. To start being the boss of my own destiny, basically.